Welcome back to Singer Dad Reacts. My name is Josh. And thank you to all of you dears out there for your patience. Um, I know there's been a delay in uh, my reactions. Um, and I explained it to those of you that are my subscribers in my community post. But for those that aren't, uh, basically, um, we've had a lot going on with our business. So we had to attend to, to a bunch of things that called me away and then um, also as I mentioned I think in a previous reaction we were in the process of moving from one house to another here in the same town um, which was another major undertaking um, and then also we were preparing to take my son my second son to school to college so we went on a little road trip and and took him to college and um, we literally left the house here <laughs> not completely unpacked um, yeah they couldn't uh, there was this, an issue with COVID that delayed the carpet from getting here so they couldn't redo their bedroom carpets and so we had to put everything that we own in the bottom level of our two-story house and then just take off <laughs> for the road trip to take my son to, to college and then when we got back then we had to uh, really focus on trying to get everything set up get the beds you know installed into the rooms and all that so anyway it's been about a week and a half since I posted a reaction and so I definitely wanted to get started again and I'm excited to continue on Dimash's journey and uh, as I mentioned before uh, these last two from the Bastau concert that I have queued up this one I'm gonna do two from Bastau 5 um, and two from Bastau 6 so when I say 5 and 6 for those that are new here, it's basically a, a, a grouping, a set of groupings for the concert. Um, and so this Dimash info station um, and this this group that put these together, um, it provides um, groupings of the different sections of the concert, basically, um, usually around four songs to each group. And so I didn't want to go through and do every single song and some of them I've already actually reacted to from this concert. If you if you uh, aren't familiar with my channel and you didn't realize that, there are several uh, like Daybreak, uh, Daidi Dao, um, Diva Dance, um, uh, I think that's it. There might be one more uh, that I've reacted to out on my channel from this concert, particular concert. So I'm skipping those. So in this particular reaction I will be reacting to Give Me Love which uh, you all missed out on my reaction from that from the singer competition because I had some technical difficulties in my recording and so I'm excited to be able to do a reaction here and provide that for you. The other one um, that I'm excited about from this grouping obviously is the SOS because he did such a fantastic job in the singer competition and that was my first Dimash reaction actually was the SOS performance from the singer competition. So this is kind of a uh, full circle moment to some degree to see him sing it again at this concert, uh, even though it's not a really long time after the concert. Uh, but it should be really good because uh, he's always adding new things to each performance for each song. The other two that I'm reacting to are uh, Blizzard or Another Snowstorm is how they that's what they show as the English translation in the the details for the video. So that one and then a tribute to Michael Jackson. That's one that many of you recommended that I look at from this concert performance because he does um, a really good job um, and it's much better than the one from the singer competition. So I wanted to take a look at that one. So those are the four for this competition. What I'm not going to be doing is reading the lyrics for each song. I just don't want to make it you know, super long for all of you. It's already going to be long with the four songs. So what I have done though is I've gone through and actually read through the lyrics. So you can see I have them queued up here on the screen. I'm not going to read through them, but you can kind of see I was reading through them before here. So without further ado, I'll go ahead and jump in here. This does have the English subtitles. They are turned on. And uh, let's get started. A 
Ağayın niye o telefonlarınızı çıkarsanız da bulama? My friends, could you all take out your phones? Together, 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 come on. Yeah, you can hear just the It's not a cry in his voice, but it's like the this tenderness that he's bringing to this song that I've heard with other songs where he just really sings it tenderly with a lot of heart, a lot of feeling behind it. Um and you kind of wonder obviously as you do with any performer, right? You know, what what Dimash is, is calling upon to bring those feelings out, right? What his love life and things like that. I mean, he, he keeps to himself quite a bit and as far as a lot of that stuff is concerned. But obviously he draws on something and he draws on the feelings that he has because he's able to put so much into the performance. And as far as vocally, here's what happens when you sing really soft and tender like that so it adds like a, a level of transparency to the vocal so like when he's going up and you kind of heard him go up into his falsetto which is what they call it when you go up into the higher part of your 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 uh, your voice it's a higher register that's above the bridge from your chest voice up into that higher part of your voice um, you can hear that that um, ascendance a little bit easier uh, as he slips up into that. That's just the nature of being in that zone where you're um, singing very softly and and uh, and all of that. It's not that he's doing it any less smoothly. It's just the nature of when you're singing um, in that style or with with uh, with that technique. Uh, but it's it's beautiful and the tone is very resonant and uh, just a beautiful tone. Let's go back just a little bit here. Sorry if that's an awkward pause. I love that, and I think he did this in uh, the singer performance as well, but I love that he's just sitting there on the stage singing to, singing to the crowd. He could be making this like this big stage production and, you know, like really getting into it and really kind of, you know, milking the audience and things like that. But he's a performer. 
and he's doing it for the right reasons. I mentioned that before. And so he's really just feeling the song and allowing the tenderness of it and the, the real feeling behind grant me love, O destiny, right? The, the words to, to come through with the power and and the tenderness of the of the moment um, he's doing the song justice right um, as well he should he he wrote it so <laughs> um, if anyone can he can so let's see here A little bit of reaching out to the crowd that I did. Get this production here. That's pretty. That's pretty amazing. One of the things that, as a performer, I key I can key in on here. So this is a this is an important distinction here as a performer to see someone in this setting and to watch how he responds when there's an instrumental part because it's a sign of maturity in a performer when that individual is still locked in on the song and really like you can see them thinking through the words to the song and staying in it's almost kind of like staying in character as an actor on stage right where you're you're acting in a scene or whatever and the time comes where you're no longer involved with the scene as much, or maybe someone else is, has dialogue over here, or some, you know something like that. Uh, are you going to stay in character? So it's similar to that. And in, in this case, he's the lead. You know, no one else is really taking the spotlight from him. But yet, the instrumentalists are kind of in a way, and so it'd be real easy to kind of, you know, step out of that or or not be as involved or immersed in the song but you can tell he's a very mature performer and he's he's really still in that zone and contemplating the words and so that that's really a, good, a sign of maturity as a performer that he's showing there I'm just gonna continue. just a beautiful song I love the melody I love the message of the song 
Um, yeah, it's amazing performance. What can you say about Dimash? I mean, again, he he understands that you don't have to come out and for every performance just put on this huge vocal showcase. I love the fact that he just came in here and he just sang it and sang it with a beautiful melody and with a lot of feeling behind it and um, it was very tender but yet resonant and um, yeah, he's because he's an artist, right? He's not just out there showing off his technique and, and what he can do. There's plenty of other songs, including uh, the diva dance coming up uh, in the next part of this concert, where he shows everyone that he's one of the best vocalists on the planet uh, and can do things that pretty much no one else can do. So he doesn't need to do that. Um, so let's go on here. Let's see if he has anything to say between these two songs here. <laughs> That's a big audience. I love having the subtitles on this version. You can tell that he's he's in a different place when he's singing at this time. Um, you can tell that he feels like more of an established artist, and he's more kind of in his comfort zone. And, and I, I got the feeling from his his singer competition performance. It was a great performance, an amazing performance, but. He was still young, and um, he was st still a little bit unknown, and so that was kind of his stepping out a little bit. I mean, he, a lot of people did know him up to uh, up to that point. I know some of you have mentioned that 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 wasn't like his start, uh, his complete start. But what I've read and studied about kind of what happened after that singer competition, that especially that SOS performance, is just he was inundated at that point and everything kind of just steamrolled from there on with his career and his schedule and, and that's why he was kind of um, a little bit exhausted during the singer competition, right? Because he was doing all these performances and everything. So this, to me, looks like a Dimash that has taken a step back and has reassessed this song and really has come to um, to try to really put his own spin on it and do it in a way where he's more at the, in the driver's seat and it's his concert and he really wants to do the song justice and improve on it and and give a, an amazing performance and, and I'm sure it will be it is so far uh, very full sound and um, I'm excited to hear the rest let's see Oh, this is 
Even though I've heard this song like many times now, because I go back and I watch other reactors discover Dimash for the first time. That's one of the things I like to do. Uh, watch them, and usually it's listening to this song, his singer performance of this song. And so I'm very familiar with the song. And, you know, the notes and the melody and everything else, but this is a new version of it this is a new performance and it's it's amazing he's really bringing it and he's just he makes it look effortless you know you have to remember what he's doing here you know i have to stop myself and say think about this josh what he's doing with his voice right now and what it means you know i've been trying to kind of like <laughs> work on my my upper my upper range lately i've just been inspired by some of what i'm seeing and stuff like that and it's always been something where i just don't have much of a falsetto most much of a head voice range at all up there what i do have kind of in the especially like right above my chest voice is pretty strong uh it's kind of in a mixed voice type thing um just like when you saw like the uh the phantom performance music of the night right so that those notes up there are, are kind of the very very top of my chest and kind of my early head voice so those are decent but going above that and kind of really kind of stretching so and, and, and what i'm doing is nothing and not even scratching the surface to what he's able to do with his voice and he's not even getting started so you have to remember that and i'm always amazed when I watch reactions where people watch this performance, the one from the singer competition, and they just kind of go, oh yeah, you know, and they just kind of watch it. And they don't really like, they're not really amazed by <laughs> what they're hearing. Uh, I'm just like, this person does not understand what they're seeing and, and what it takes to take these little tiny vocal folds and manipulate them and do the things he's doing across all the different registers he's covering. It's it's astounding. Let me go back here. I kind of paused at a weird spot. And I have to say the production is amazing. I've said it before about the Bastel concert, but they're outdoing themselves with with uh, some of these songs. I mean, with all of the projections and stuff behind him. I've dealt with audio video and stuff like that with aspects of my career so I understand what it takes to produce a lot of this stuff and it's really impressive. Adding some some brass in there for this version. Yeah. that was stronger that was stronger that high note on this version versus the singer version so i think he made it a point to really because i think what happened in the singer version having seen it many times he kind of pulls the mic away and he pulls it a little bit too soon and so he loses some of the the volume of that high note so i think he consciously did a little something there to make sure that note came through if he put a little more power or he just held the mic a little closer, I'm not sure. Let me go back just uh, a little bit and watch. <laughs>
He brought the mic in. Yeah. Close your feet. Close your mouth. And he brought this down too. Close your feet. Yeah, I won't spend a ton of time. I've already kind of talked about what he did here, but amazing performance. And you can see him making different little subtle changes in his performance here versus the one in The Singer, um, which shows his growth as an artist, right? Where he's looking at a performance he did and, and updating it, changing it up, you know, stylizing it, adding his own changes to it that he prefers over the others right and and starting to really play with it and and hone it that's part of being uh, the growth of of an artist um, and it, it kind of um, that's just the nature of how artists work right they want to always kind of improve just like if a sculptor was to do a sculpture and then do another version of it they would want to improve that sculpture or painting or whatever they're working on each time they had a chance to to recreate it right so that's the essence of what he's trying to do here but amazing this looked effortless and again you have to remember this is like i don't know two-thirds into the concert he's already done i don't know 15 songs or something 12 to 15 songs and he's tackling this song and Diva Dance is, not, is coming later, you know, later in the concert, which is uh, another one that's just a, you know, intense and, and super difficult. So he's in a league all his own. Let's move on to the Blizzard song here. Thank you very much, my friends. Next, in order to bring sincere regards exclusively to you, I hope she will receive enthusiastic applause from us Kazakh people. Your favorite singer will perform on the stage. With her help, I made great success at Slyansky Bazaar two years ago. Everyone figured out who this is, right? Let's welcome Christina Arbakait with applause. So this is a duet. Awesome. Который 
Если порочок мои нечаянных потерь, осторожны кого И моется головой в темноте, опять метель. Две вечности зашлись в один короткий день. Меня не ведай, прости На пороге долго не пойми И теперь у нашей повторившейся любви Сроком до мечты зажить She has a very sharp tone to her voice, especially like in that part of her voice, it just really cuts right through. So that's she's got a good tone. This is interesting. I, I love all this stuff going on behind them. It's just like it reminds me of like <laughs> something like the Olympics or something, right? Where they have all of the choreography and all this com complex type you know stage work and projections and things like that happening behind it's just an amazing production i'm, I'm excited to hear more from her This kind of reminds me of, so I'm a big Andrea Bocelli fan, uh, as I've mentioned before, and he'll do these numbers, like he did one with Ed Sheeran, for instance, and these other pop artists where he's singing more of the classical style, usually like in his case, Italian, and and then they're, they're singing in usually English or sometimes Italian as well. Um, but they're different styles, right? So he's the more of the classical style and the other singer's more of the pop style. And that kind of reminds me of this performance because her her style, the way that her voice is coming through is more kind of a pop style. There's not a whole lot of vibrato. It's more kind of forward um, in that pop style um, coming through. So, but it sounds great. It's just a different style of singing. Um, and Dimash is still able to blend fairly well with her. It's just, <laughs> what's crazy is you've got the the male singer is singing the higher part, um, and the and the female singer is is below. That's that's the world of Dimash, though. So uh, he's just amazing. Let me go back a little bit here.
A respectful friends, that was Christina Orbach, Orbachite. Hope I pronounced that right. Thank you very much. So this is the uh, MJ tribute portion, the last song from this uh, reaction. So I'm excited to see his new take on uh, the Michael Jackson songs. Um, and see how it compares to the singer competition. So without further ado, here we go. Wow. Hey friends, again, again, again. These even look like Michael Jackson dancers. Nice. Wow. That's awesome. He's working it. That is cool. That's definitely a Michael Jackson pose. Nice. Running all over the stage. He's been working on his moves for sure. He's doing better. He is in shape. Here he goes in the drums. Yeah. Whoa, break dancers. Nice. <laughs> 
so talented. I think they might have attached something to him so he can like harnesses or something maybe. What are the sunrise? What about rain? What about yeah. all the things that you say to your second? What about killing things? Hey, the time. What about all the things? Did you say to yours and mine? Did you ever stop to notice all the blood we've shed before? Did you ever stop to notice the cry knows me with your shoulders? It's gotta be hard to sing with those harnesses pulling on you. I used to dream, I used to glance beyond the sun. No, I don't know where we are. Also, I know deep, deep far. Wow. The thought that's in my mind, other than the fact that he just did an amazing job there, and um, I like this performance a lot more than I like the, the singer performance. I think he really brought it together, and um, it's a much tighter performance, and the, the vocal was great, and the, the dancing, and the all the stuff that he had going on with the choreography, and the the harness bringing him up like that, that was pretty cool. And like I said, that's got to be hard to kind of sing with with that pulling up there. But the other part of it that I have to think about for this concert setting is he sings Diva Dance right after this. So now I'm getting kind of an idea, having kind of watched a lot of the Bastau concert, going back to my reaction I did a while back of Diva Dance. It's even more amazing to me that he's able to go from this song, dancing, running all over the place, and to do the super difficult, amazing vocal acrobatics that he does in Diva Dance. I just, yeah, he's, <laughs> he's incredible. Um, and I really feel like it's neat that he loves Michael Jackson so much and uh, that he put this much time and effort into doing this performance of some of Michael's different numbers. And um, I'm sure Michael is smiling down from where he's at. Uh, but I think, and that's something that I want to say kind of to, uh, to deers all over. And I hope it doesn't offend anybody, but... I, I see these comments from Deers on Facebook and some of these different areas where it's like you see people that are new Deers 
come through and they'll ask about a definition of a deer. And, and some people are saying something like, well, you have to only watch Dimash and not watch any of their artists. But here's what I would say to you. Dimash idolizes Michael Jackson, listens to Michael Jackson, listens to other artists. He idolizes Andrea and some of these other artists and listens to their music, sings their music. So if you're following Dimash's example, which I assume you are because you're followers of Dimash and your dears, then you're going to love other artists. You're going to... Um, that's how you build yourself as an artist is, is you look at others, you look at what they're doing, how they do it, and you try to adopt that and, and make and better yourself and add new textures and new facets to the way that you enjoy music, the way you feel the words to the songs, the, the way that you perform, all those different aspects. Um, I love Dimash. I, li I listen to Dimash. I love to hear him sing. But I'll tell you, I mean, I listen to a lot of different artists, obviously. I mean, I react to a bunch of different artists on my channel. Um, and I consider myself a deer. And and, uh, um, and I think we need to really, um, you know, keep that, keep that in mind. Um, so anyway, that's my little, that's my opinion of, of what constitutes a deer. And I think too, and I've talked about it before, um, to be a true deer, I think too, you need to kind of follow Dimash's example in the things that he does um, on the other front as well, kind of on the personal front. You know, he loves children. He gives a lot through charity. Um, he loves his family. Um, you know, he's a very genuine, kind person. Um, away from when he's performing, and uh, and that's those are the ty kinds of things that we should be focused on, trying to become ourselves and and trying to emulate as deers as well, in my opinion. So, anyway, uh, thank you all for your support of my channel. Um, I'm excited to continue on my journey with Dimash. I have one more Bastel reaction left. Um, and there's several songs from Bastel 7 that I'll be reacting to next. And then I will move on to some of the fun stuff that you guys have been wanting me to go to from 2018. Hello, Sinful Passion, some of these others. So I'm excited to to move on to that step and, and to get to some of these. Um, and I again, thank you for your patience. If you haven't subscribed already, if you could please click on subscribe, click the notifications. Uh, I hope all of you are doing well amidst all of the stuff going on in the world. Um, it puts it all in perspective, right? I mean, where I'm at, we've, we've got a lot of the fires going on here um, all around us. And so there have been days where I go outside and it's just all like dark and uh, ashy and kind of um, and all of that. But um, I'm grateful for... Um, the freedoms that I have and for the opportunity I have to interact with all of you around the world and I hope that all of you are happy and healthy and that you are finding fulfillment and joy in life I sincerely hope that and I hope that in some way I can contribute to that through my channel that's one of my goals um, regarding my channel is that I can in some way help others around the world to find joy and um, to find hope and know that they are something special. Um, I mentioned Mr. Rogers in one of my other reactions, but he's definitely one of my heroes. Um, if you don't know who that is, look him up. He was um, just a very humble man that um, started a children's public TV show, and his whole goal was to expand his neighborhood he called it Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, and he called all of the children he talked to on his TV program his neighbors, and he invited, you know, people to uh, his show to to talk to them and and call them his neighbors, and and he basically had a message to all the children each time that he did his his shows, and he talked with them about how they are special, um, that they matter. 
um, and um, that he liked them just the way that they were. And some of these children were, and they've come forward later on, were in situations where they were being abused or they were losing hope for a brighter future. And Mr. Rogers was the one that gave them that hope. Um, and, and in some cases, these individuals actually met Mr. Rogers later and he gave them a hug and was genuinely wanting to know how they were doing. That's what it's all about. Um, to genuinely care and want to do these things and broadcast and reach out to the world for the right reasons. And that's what I really strive to do with my channel. So thank you for letting me talk about that. And I'm sure this is going to be a long reaction. I apologize for that. But thanks again for your support and uh, take care.